Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Balan, and this is Mana and Artifice. Today I'm going to be talking about everything constructs. Oh. My. Gosh. I think this might blow your mind in more ways than one. So, constructs. This is really going to be totally different from what we've been doing in the mod so far. But it's really going to make the whole experience of building little minions that can do stuff for you um, probably a bit challenging at first, because uh, I'll admit it was a bit challenging for me. But once you actually get your minions doing what you want them to do, it's actually really gratifying seeing the little, you know, chain of events going on and things that they're doing. So we're going to start off with something rather simple. We're going to start off with your little helper that you can find in the Constructs chapter titled Magic Broom. And this is just going to be a stick, a moat of air, and a hay bale, uh, plus an octagon and one of these little, like, downward-facing fishes on, on your uh, mana-weaving altar. Now, keep in mind that the AI textures, blocks, functionality, everything on this mod may end up changing over time, as this is still in beta. So with that excuse in the way, uh, let's assume that I've already cast my mana weaving over here and made myself a magic broom. If you don't know how to do mana weaving, go back through other videos. I've made a bunch so far. And this is going to be the last one I do for a while because this mod is currently in a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, development i should say especially for later chapters and rather than give a whole bunch of inaccurate information uh, because it'll likely end up being changed later on i'm going to stop after this but this should really help people get a lot uh, of the way if not most of the way or all the way into mana and artifice just by covering this last chapter for now uh, i look forward to coming back to it in the future but a magic broom how does it work well you choose an inventory to assign it to, and it's an, and, and you just right-click the broom on the inventory. You can choose on the side, on the top, whatever, and if you want to pick it up, you just sneak and right-click, and it will go back into your inventory. Now, if you're in creative mode, you might ac it, it might end up deleting the broom in doing so, so you're going to want to be in survival, as I am now. But basically, you choose a face uh, and a side or whatever like that. I recommend that you probably end up wanting to choose a side of a chest for now, now, the AI may get behavioral changes in the future. Who knows? Because, you know, AI things are really weird. But if you place it on a chest, I just sneak right click so that I could actually open the chest at the same time. But you can still access the inventory. You can see that there is a, a magic broom in there already. And then there's the one that I've just placed on top. Now, what does a magic broom do? It picks up stuff in an area. You can see it automatically picks things up that are just close to it. And if they're kind of close to it, you know, it'll start moving towards them eventually sweeping them up. So it's kind of like a little animated vacuum of a sort. And you can see just by clicking here that all the runes and marking that I had were pretty much stored inside. So the thing is they, they only have three hearts. If you look in the top right corner there, it says three hearts. You can hit them you know, and that when they die, they don't drop anything. So they are kind of expensive in that way if you end up killing them off quickly or something. So protect your brooms, keep them safe keep them keep them secret so let's get into a lot more complex behaviors with actual constructs not just a little magic broom that you know can sweep things up into into chests and whatnot but we're talking your little minions that i probably showed off in the very first uh, episode if i recall properly of mana and artifice and we're going to show you today i'm going to show you today how you can actually use your construct workbench as well as your Chimerite crystals, chimerite crystals, however you'd like to pronounce it, uh, into your own little automation. So again, going into your book, I recommend you go to the Constructs chapter, and really to get a good idea of everything that's going on, don't go with the, the simple automation yet, because that, that's a little bit more complex, and in fact, I recommend this being saved for last, because that's what I'm going to be doing, is I'm demonstrating this at the end of the video. But uh, sided inventories is important to take note of. I just showed you the magic broom. But the animated constructs chapter is really, really important. It's going to tell you a ton of stuff. It's probably the longest chapter I've seen in the book. Uh, but it tells you about how you can make the parts. Uh, there are plenty of different materials to choose from. You can keep going. The different benefits and drawbacks of the materials. Wood, you have like one health point. Uh, they can float in water, they're really speedy, and they have no knockback resistance. Then you go on to something like stone, which you have access to wood and stone at this level, uh, tier 2 and tier 3. 
Uh, as you level uh, up your tier, you can gain access to higher or better or maybe just different materials. They might not even be better. Uh, but the health points on stone is uh, double that of wood. Their buoyancy is negative, so they're going to sink. You can offset that, though. Uh, and then, of course, speed per part, uh, that's 12, so they're not quite as fast as the wooden ones, and they have a 20% knockback resistance So per part. Now, of course, if you make the entire thing out of you know stone, then it's going to increase. Each one of these per part, so this is going to be minus one consecutive. If you have multiple parts, the legs, the body, the head, arm, and arm, then you know, you're, you're going to have some definite big negatives to the, to the floatability of your little friend. But... Anyway, let's continue on. It's the same with the parts and other things like that. Iron, you can get even better stuff. Gold, obsidian, these are all things that you can check out yourself. Diamond and so on. But then you set up this, the construct workbench, which it tells you in this one chapter alone that I've been able to find at least, uh, how you can actually set this up. So you've got the workbench in the middle and somewhere within a few blocks of it, I believe within, yep, five blocks here it says, you can put a bunch of these uh, chimerite crystals, which I've got a whole slew of them over here. You only need eight. You don't need any more, but you will definitely need at least eight. You, can, you can't have less than that for this to actually work. Then you place all the parts onto the altar that you've made. Uh, you add affinities to the crystals, and each uh, different affinity has a definite plus or minus to it. So let's actually talk about making parts because honestly you're really not going to want to bother with any of that other stuff until you've decided on what you're going to make. So for the purposes of this stuff I'm actually going to make a regular uh, like placer, and lumberjacker, whatever you, you, you want to call him. He's going to place trees, he's going to chop down trees and that that's pretty much it. And then he's going to place trees and chop down trees and I'm going to have a little broom friend that I've got over here and we're going to have the broom just nearby uh, assigned to this chest, which I'm just going to click on top there. It's going to sweep things that get near it. Now, for us to start off, we are going to need to pick some limbs. Now, if you look in the inventory here, you can see that there are so many different limbs to choose from. Uh, in fact, let's just look up the word construct in my JEI mod, which is helping me to find a lot of this stuff, and it helps narrow down the field. Of course, there's lots of other things that you're going to want to make. You're probably going to have to make some of these parts on uh, your altars and whatnot, smashing them, hammering them together. For instance, there's a construct frame pattern head, there's a rod, torso, hips, hammer, claw, etc., of which you'll have to have uh, access to, you know, probably a rune forge, a rune scribing table, a runic anvil to kind of take, make these uh, different runes, hammer them out, and make the different parts. I kind of covered how to do that in the previous chapter. I'm not going to be covering that today because there's way too much to cover on the AI mechanics and just the different things you can have these guys do today. Now I will go over a basic rundown of the different part types and I'm going to just use the wood ones here for an example. There's a, a wooden basic construct head. You can have a, one of these on there and it will allow your construct to essentially do up to eight different commands before it can't do anything more. So if you have a whole series of commands, which there are different command blocks, that's these weird looking boxes here that when you approach, they turn into triangles. They're called load stars. We'll cover those in a bit. Uh, but when you have too many commands given to them at once, uh, it won't be able to figure that out. So this is just for basic stuff, which actually this and this that I have set up here, like lumberjacking, and over here I've got butchering and harvesting, uh, butchering animals, harvesting of wheat, We've got planting of wheat and breeding of animals. Uh, that you know those aren't going to be a problem. When you get into something more complex, like uh, taking an item, smelting it, making a rune, pounding a rune, going back, taking another item, smelting it, adding it to the the forge, m combining them together, and then putting them in the chest, and maybe even turning off a lever. That's a lot of commands. I mean, look at this series. So that's going to require a smart head. If you look over here, we've got a, a smart head that will be required for that. Now, there's also a wooden rebreather head, which is basically the same as a, as I just said, basic construct head, but it allows them to breathe underwater. So if you have some dudes that need to work near or in water, that's probably a good idea. Beware of lava. You don't, you don't want your dudes to die. Moving on, you've got the torso. It's just the chest piece. Something that's required on all of them is basically going to be a, a head, a torso, legs, and two arms. Uh, now, you've got your legs, and then you've got bladed arms. 
You've got hammer arms. You've got grabber arms. And that's about it. You can mix and match these. But there are some requirements for the different tasks. You can always take your construct, once you've made it, off the table, put it back on the table, and replace the arms and pieces, heads, legs, body, everything on it if you so desire at your will, and you get the old pieces back. But if your construct dies, you uh, only get a few of the parts back. So you really want to keep an eye on those guys. So for, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be spawning in stuff, a basic wooden head, a basic wooden torso, basic wooden legs. And for the use of this little tree farm here, uh, actually, in, you can click these things in here, like there's a little head, there's the torso, there's the legs. It just needs a couple arms uh, for it to actually function. Now, blade arms aren't really going to be useful against uh, trees. And now, hammer arms, not so much either. But uh, grabber arms, yes. And in fact, I do see that I'm missing something here. Oh, there we go. I knew I missed one of them. Axe arms. They're for chopping and for combat. Now, you want to make sure that you've got a left arm and a right arm. You don't want two of the same. I've made the mistake way too many times at this point. So I've got a construct axe right arm and a grabber left arm. Now, why do I need both of these? Why not just go double axe? You know, just, just dual, dual wield axes. Well, it's difficult to plant a tree sapling with two hatchets for hands. So if you give it one of each, it can then plant with one or place in this case, and then it can chop down with the other. So we've got this complete little wooden uh, uh, construct here all set up just by right-clicking these pieces into the table. Next, you're going to want to choose the properties of your construct. And once again, if you go back into the book, I was talking about this in that animated constructs chapter. You just keep scrolling down until you get to the affinity effects. This is what we're talking about here. This is where you cast onto these chimerite crystals and you essentially give your construct special, um, I guess, stats, if you will. So if you choose an air spell, and these all have to be touch spells of some sort, they have to target the block, not yourself. So you can't use like self fling before <laughs> and aim at one of these blocks. It has to be something that actually targets a block. So if you use like touch fling, then you'll do uh, an air spell onto a chimerite thing. I will demonstrate this in a moment. But know that you can do up to eight different affinities because you only need eight chimerite crystals nearby. If you use an air one, it will increase its speed per point. It will increase uh, magic. It will just increase its magic or arcane. It will increase its magic damage resistance. Earth, something like break, will also increase its damage resistance, which is really nice. 5% is, is very nice, actually. Helps it last a lot longer in case it gets hit by something, including suffocation damage. Um, uh, Ender, uh, it's carrying capacity. You really don't need to worry about this too much. In fact, adding this in early on can really mess things up. So you want to be sure you know what you're doing. If you're just transporting stuff and that's all your guy is doing, that is really important. If your character is like putting stuff into furnaces and waiting for them at certain time lengths for one of them to smelt and you had them move two or ten or whatever, then this is going to be really uh, important to not use. <laughs> Fire. This is actually uh, can be really useful for combat as well as um, harvesting, uh, butchering critters. You know, you can get your cooked food automatically. You don't even need to use a furnace. And then water adds a buoyancy level to offset the fact that they might just sink and drown. So, <laughs> but if you're nowhere near water, you really don't need to worry about it too much. So what I'm going to go with in this case is just a bunch of air because I want my dudes to be super speedy. Now, I already have an air spell, and in this case, I'm going to sneak, right-click, and show you. It's just touch, fling. That's it. And I can I can choose it on here, and if I wanted to, I could actually choose a different one. Let's choose break. Now, normally, when I use this spell on a block, I forgot, I don't have break as rote in my survival, so I'm in creative mode. But normally, when I cast this spell, I get a block, and I can then use it. You know, I, I, I basically break it. Well, in this case, it doesn't work that way. It will instead cast it on the, uh, the crystal and actually add its attribute to it. So you're giving an affinity to this crystal. Now remember, you only need eight. I've, I've got way too many crystals here. I'm just demonstrating there's a lot of colors for you to choose from. Chimerite crystals are, are not that difficult to make. They're basically just a bunch of chimerite gems around some kind of dye to get the different effect that you want. 
But that being said, let's actually switch back. I'm going to go with my fling spell and see so you can overwrite it. If you want to eliminate these, I found that even just right clicking with your hand doesn't work. So you just need to break the gem and put it back down. But really, you can just overwrite it with whatever spell you want. Remember, I only need eight of these. So, and they just need to be within five blocks of the construct workbench. Which, if you're curious, because I haven't mentioned it yet, it's a couple wood logs uh, as well as a couple glyphs, stone, and a, a chimerite gem. It's really cheap to make this thing as well. The, the gems in this aren't that difficult. You just need to find yourself some coal once you're high enough level, and uh, you, you or uh, diamonds and emeralds, as I've said before, get a bunch of chimerite. Anyway, uh, this guy here, we're going to summon him. That's it. You, you're ready to summon once you've got this guy in place. Yes, the parts will take some time. Like I said, I'm not spending time on that. But you just, with an empty hand, right-click and wait. And you'll start seeing animated effects depending upon the different affinities. If it's fire, it's going to be like little fiery effects. In this case, it's going to be air. I've chosen all air. And there we are. We now have our little friend here, which isn't doing anything. I can't right-click him. I can hit him. He's got two and a half hearts. Now you keep in mind here, oh, look at that. He just healed. They heal pretty quick. Not too fast, though. So if I keep on smacking him, he'll end up, you know, taking some more damage and die really quickly. And with such low health, it doesn't take much for uh, other critters in the world to actually attack them. But as he's got an axe, he has an offensive weapon. Or he, it, has an offensive weapon to attack with uh, or defend itself with. And how better to control it than with a rod? Now, in this case, I have two rods, a construct control rod and a construct diagnostic rod. The control rod is made with the construct frame rod, which you probably saw in the construct chapter of, you know, the different things that you're going to have to make and hammer out and whatnot. Some nether quartz and a gold nugget. Now, the diagnostic rod, you can't switch between them. You have to make a new, another one and add a piece of black dye. And then you can actually make this. They are very different. So the one, if you sneak click, now I'm going to show you the bounding box of this guy. It's less than a block. The reason I'm showing you this is because they will be able to go underneath two block surfaces and access things. So aim at their feet with the wand. So sneak right click, and then you can aim in a different area, and he will follow you. And, ju and ju you just right click. So it's sneak right click to on his feet, and then right click, and he'll follow you and defend you. Now. How do you know that that's what's happening? What 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 is this little guy thinking right now? I need to find out what is going on in his little little construct noggin. We'll sneak right click with the, uh, what's it called? The diagnostic rod. And it says here, he can melee attack, he can chop, he can plant, he can carry, and he can craft. I'll follow and guard you, boss. That's pretty much it. You can see his health level and everything. This tells you his current level of thinking. If you're, you've given him some instructions, it, I keep calling it a he, I'm sorry. But this is the next part, because you don't just want him to follow you around. But I will tell you that there is another command you can do besides just have him follow, it follow you, and that is to sneak click twice, and then it stays there. See, he's no longer following me anymore. But as you can see, I mean, I currently have speed four from my long strider aura going on, and it's keeping up quite well. Uh, really well. In fact, it's prob I'm probably still slower than it is, but <laughs> you stay there. Okay, so next let's talk about load stars. These are like command centers for your little constructs, excluding the broom. The broom doesn't actually get any special instructions short of sweep in this area, dump in this chest. That That's just it by default. But load stars are basically items you can use to put a series or single commands to whatever construct is assigned to it. So, in this case, it's just made with some obsidian, some chimerite gems, and gold ingots. You can see now that chimerite is really important for constructs, <laughs> as well as a bunch of runesmithing. Uh, but not to worry, you can automate some of this stuff. Some of it. Uh, maybe not finding the chimerite gems, but still, you can automate a lot of things with these guys. So, once you've made a lodestar, know that it will respect redstone. So, having redstone, in this case, this redstone is on. You can see the little red flashes on there. It will no, not uh, deliver anything to any constructs while there's redstone being given to it. If I turn this off, then whatever commands this has in it will be given to the construct that is assigned to it. To assign a construct to a lodestone, you sneak click it, then you, you just click on, on that block. 
So normally, if you want the guy to follow you, you click anywhere, as long as it's not on like a specific you know block of intelligence like Lodestar. But if you sneak click and then click here, it's just going to wait to find out what is going on with this. Now in this case, let's turn this off. We're going to open up this menu and we're going to take a look at the different things that you can do. You can take from container, uh, which you specifically have to tell it what that item is and where the container is. A lot of these are going to require runes of marking. I recommend you get a lot of these. Probably just enough to complete this last one if you really want, and then you can automate making them as often as you want. But otherwise, you can just make them as you need to for simple tasks like this and this. So, uh, take from item from container, place item into container. Same thing, just reverse. You again have to tell it what your or what container it's going into, and so on. Uh, scribing runes, you can tell it what to scribe, but you need to give it specific instructions as to which rune it's going to be scribing. Forging a rune. <coughs> Forging a rune. This means that it will take uh, whatever is currently on the uh, hammer that you specify the location of and tr attempt to try and forge it into a rune. Chop trees. It will chop trees in an area with uh, kind of like a, a chain reaction of effect. So it's not just going to chop a single block. It will chop a tree. Um, though it'll just take out the wood, not the leaves. Uh, harvest crops. This will harvest crops in an area. Chop trees, harvest crops, plant crops, uh, butcher, and breed. These are all going to have a similar effect where you have to choose an area where you take a marking, rune of marking and you choose one before. Sort of like I showed you in the previous video when we were talking about uh, like designating an area that was going to be destroyed by the, this, this book over here, the book of the flatlands. Uh, and you'll use a similar thing. And I will demonstrate all of this because uh, we're going to actually go through all of these in a combined effort, not just one by one. Move just has him move from one spot to another. So let's actually do a few of these. We're going to have him move uh, in three places. So we've got these, and I'm just left-clicking on this to bring these up here. If you choose this, oops, I, I did four. I only wanted a triangle. I wanted to move in three places. Just hold right-click and then click left. That's it. And, and you, you can make another one. It's actually quite intuitive once you figure that out, but until then, it can be rather disconcerting. And then you can always break the load star if you really forget. But otherwise, if I click on here, it, it has this little pin that resembles the rune of marking. And it's like, okay, so that's a bit confusing. So how does this work? Well, you just take a rune of marking, right click on a block. Right click on another block, right click on another block. And you can see because I'm in creative, it just spawned these new ones. And it created waypoints for these to actually work with. Now, for you to better see this, let me actually get some grass. There we go. We're going to do this. And we'll change these to be here, here, and here. Now, when I break these, nothing's to be seen. But if I hold this, oh, there, there, and there. Because these blocks were actually, you know, present, it's difficult to see them sometimes. But you can now see that there are three positions for these markers. And what I'm basically telling it to do is to start at one position. Then I hit escape, go back in here, go to the next position, hit escape, go back in here, and then go to the third position. That's it. And then if I want it to actually work, I then turn this off because I've already assigned it to the lodestar. So let's see it. It's going to just start doing, there we go, that's it. It doesn't look like much, it just needs to get close to those locators, it doesn't have to be spot on them, it just has to touch like kind of the, the bounding box that that was in before, so once it touches that spot it stops. So it doesn't look exactly like the triangle that we had, but it's still going to have a path there. And remember, these guys aren't going to be exact, there will be some issues from time to time because nobody can figure out you know everything about Minecraft. But they can be really, really useful. Uh, otherwise, let, let's uh, turn, turn this off and have this, this character here do something a little bit different, shall we? In fact, I would like for you to follow me over here. Careful, there's lava behind me. I don't want you to, to use that. I do want you to come in here and stay there. Okay, so sneak click, sneak click. You stay here, all right? <laughs> now, I'm only doing this to keep this guy safe from intruders and other things like that. Keep his path straight on and, and easy to go. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed this this video series. I look forward to coming back to it in the future, potentially explaining a bit more if needs be. But at the very least, I'm really happy to have uh, had the pleasure of doing a bit by bit on this series. If you enjoyed this video and uh, many of our others, please be sure to give a like, comment below, subscribe to the channel, help us get more subscribers and spread the mischief. If you guys want, we also have a Twitch channel that we uh, frequent probably about three, maybe more times a week. Feel free to come visit us there. Till next time, folks. I'll see ya.